Hi, it's Dwyer. Gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Right now, you have amazing things happening in the Aaron Hernandez trial. Just imagine for a moment that you have a client who is the subject of a murder investigation. Just imagine that the police have a lot of evidence, right? Videotapes of your client, you know, near the murder scene with the victim shortly before the victim is killed, right? Your client with the victim leaving an automobile. Your client coming back to the automobile without the victim, right? Just imagine your client just happens to own a gun, kind of like the gun used in the murder, right? Just imagine his girlfriend confirms that she saw a gun in the house that just happens to be kind of like the gun used in the murder, right? Just imagine that the prosecution has evidence that your client asked the girlfriend to remove items from the house shortly after the murder while the police were investigating the murder, right? If you're Aaron Hernandez's attorney with all of this information, how can you possibly argue for his innocence? Let me tell you, they're doing a hell of a job. Their argument is that two other guys who were with Hernandez that night did the shooting in Hernandez's presence. They're conceding that Hernandez was at the murder scene. They're claiming that Hernandez is a young man who saw friends kill another friend and didn't know what to do, right? The whole in this defense, and it's a sizable hole, is that if you saw a friend commit murder and you have a newborn baby, would you allow that friend who you've just discovered is a murderer to hold your child? Right? That's the question. Aaron Hernandez had a newborn. Apparently, the guys he's accusing of murdering, Odin Lloyd, were seen holding Hernandez's newborn baby shortly thereafter, right? Now, I'm guessing the argument is going to be that Hernandez was simply too terrified to do anything about it, right? He suddenly realized that he had friends, Jack the Ripper and Ted Bundy, and here they were hanging around his house. What else could he do but allow them to hold his child, right? If he spoke up, they might have realized that he had reservations about his relationship with both of them, and who knows what could have happened, right? They're added wrinkles. These friends, of course, were, you know, smoking PCP shortly before the, uh, or in the days leading up to the murder, right? Um, one wonders what Hernandez was doing hanging around this crowd. Let's just say that the verdict is expected shortly you want to keep your ear up and ready to hear it. Let's talk about a couple other things in boxing before I get to what I believe to be the bet of the year. Right? Arthur Abraham, Robert Stiglitz, that's gone to a purse bid for their fourth fight. That should be interesting. The problem I have, though, is that when two guys get to a fourth fight, Anything can happen. There are no surprises, right? You've actually seen your opponent three times, right? If I were you, I'd be a little bit hesitant, given the topsy-turvy nature of that series, to place any kind of betting action on that fourth fight. We also have a sanctioning body ordering a April 17th purse bid for Donna Stevenson versus Sergei Kovalev. Now, I personally believe Kovalev wins that fight, but... Let me say this, maybe the bet is easier than that. Wasn't that Adonis Stevenson on the canvas against Andres Fonfara, right? Recent fight, the fight before his last fight. Wasn't that Sergei Kovalev on the canvas against Blake Caparello, 
right? That's just two fights ago, right? Given the fact that both of these guys hit hard, right? Given the fact that neither of these guys has really an unbreakable chin, think about it. This is really the Darnell Boone alumni fight, isn't it? Because didn't Darnell Boone drop both of these guys? Maybe the play might be both guys by KO, right? Let's take what the casino gives us. If the, if the casino makes one of these guys a big underdog, then I think taking that guy and hedging the play with the other by KO might be your best bet. Now let's talk about right Andy Lee against Peter Quillen briefly right has Andy Lee looked fresh to you in any recent fights what's the evidence that you have that Andy Lee's even capable today of making it to the 10th 11th or 12th round against a heavy-handed opponent right now I know Andy's been giving interviews saying he wants to be a great fighter right okay great fair enough but boxing's a tough sport. It slows you down. It wears you out. Hasn't Andy Lee looked slowed down and worn out to you of late? Right? I know he won his last fight. He stunned the other guy. The ref jumped in and stopped it. Right? Great. Do you think that's going to happen against Peter Quillen? Let me say, this is another fight that I'm scratching my head wondering how this fight could go the distance. Right? I think these guys are going to trade a lot of shots. I think the shots are going to be heavy. Right? I'll be surprised if Andy Lee versus Peter Quillen goes the distance. Right? You don't have to take a side. You can actually bet distance. Right? Andy Lee, to me, looks a little bit more now. Peter Quillen has a big punch, right? I don't see how Andy Lee goes the distance. I'm guessing Andy Lee doesn't either and is going to try to land some big shots early. Now, let's talk about what I consider to be the bet of the year to this point. Understand if the line were even, if it were an even money fight, and I take chances... I'll concede that. I'm willing to look at underdogs. I'll concede that. But if the fight were even money, I'd take Lamont Peterson over Danny Garcia. Right? Danny Garcia, to me, is a mid-range hooker. Right? He does have a straight right hand, but he's predominantly a mid-range hooker. He comes in, and he kind of is hooking you to death. Right? Now, as I like to say, there's a tape out there. It's Ashley Theo Payne against Danny Garcia. Right? I thought Ashley Theo Payne is taming Danny Garcia in that fight. In fact, there's another tape. El Terrible, Eric Morales, the first time he fights Danny Garcia. Let's give Garcia the second time. But the first time. I thought El Terrible was throwing the much straighter punches. Right? Don't get me wrong. El Terrible passed his prime. Right? Older fighter. Right? At that time. Danny Garcia, young lion. The young lion devoured the old master. Right? Let's just say if El Terrible was in his prime, I'd take El Terrible in that matchup. Right? I thought El Terrible made Danny look limited, as limited as El Terrible made Manny Pacquiao look when El Terrible beat Manny Pacquiao in a fight many have forgotten. Right? Now, Lamont Peterson doesn't have Garcia's punch. But understand, these two guys who both beat Amir Khan beat him differently. I thought Amir Khan was out the gate fast against Danny Garcia. I thought he made Danny Garcia look limited. I thought he was pulverizing Danny Garcia with the jab. Just like Ashley Theopay was pulverizing Danny Garcia. But you know the story. When you're fighting a puncher, you don't have a big margin of error. 
You can look good for, you know, multiple rounds. If the guy starts landing big shots and you start getting hit with those big shots, you can easily lose a fight that technically you were dominating. I thought that's what happened to Amir Khan. I thought Khan had success early. Khan's a warrior. I thought he hung in the pocket way too long. I thought Khan's not that great at hiding his head. He's stiff up here, right? Khan gets caught. Khan gets taken out. Now, what I want you to do is compare and contrast that with the Lamont Peterson fight. Khan starts fast. Peterson's in trouble. Then Peterson starts smothering Khan. Think about it. Neutralizes Khan's foot speed. Starts methodically outboxing Amir Khan. Not landing big shots and knocking him down like Danny Garcia, but outboxing him. Right? I think Peterson is the better boxer. Now I'll agree. After the Lucas Matisse fight, let's remember, both of these guys fought Lucas Matisse. Very different results, right? Danny Garcia knocks down Matisse. Matisse knocks down Lamont Peterson. I think the, the Lucas Matisse fight taught us that Lamont Peterson can go down when hit on the chin. No question about it. Or the temple, right? I would argue that Matisse throws straighter punches than Danny Garcia. I would argue that style-wise, it's harder for a boxer technician like Lamont Peterson to deal with Lucas Matisse than it is Danny Garcia. Well, right now, curiously, a fighter I would take at even money is actually the plus 275 underdog. Think about that. Plus 275. Put another way, Manny Pacquiao is not as big an underdog against Floyd Mayweather as Lamont Peterson is to Danny Garcia. Right? So, the bet I'm recommending, and I have a previous video up here, especially at these odds, is to take Lamont Peterson, the fighter I think is the better fighter. And to hedge the play with Danny Garcia by KO. I'll concede if Garcia hits Lamont Peterson right and Peterson had problems, was on the canvas against Khan, right? Was on the canvas against Lucas Batiste. I'll concede. Peterson can go down. I believe Peterson even hit the canvas against Timothy Bradley. But if Danny Garcia doesn't get the knockout, I think Danny Garcia gets undressed. That's how big the boxing gap is in my eyes, right? It's interesting. PBC has a commercial for this fight. And in the commercial, Lamont Peterson calmly tells you that he feels on his skills alone he should win the fight. I don't think he's bragging. I don't even think he's selling the fight. I think he's just telling you how he sees the fight. He thinks he's the better boxer. I agree with him. So I like the underdog. Now, understand, taking underdogs has a lot of risk. Right? I want to be clear here. I took Johnny Gonzalez against favorite Gary Russell. That fight blew up on me. This fight could well blow up on me. But I'll take my chances. Right? Because, quite frankly, I'd rather go by the film than by the public. So, I'm not expecting Lee versus Quillen to go the distance. And, I like the underdog, Lamont Peterson, to win his fight hedged with Danny Garcia by KO. That's how I see it. Let me hear how you see it. Comment on any fight I've mentioned. Abraham Stiglitz, they have had some classic matches. Stevenson Kovalev, folks, that fight's going to happen, right? Either that fight happens or someone cowardly tries to avoid a purse bid, right? Lee versus Quillen, 
and of course Garcia versus Peterson let me also point out too that since PBC is on network television be aware of the times right the fights kick off at 530 on April 11th Pacific time right be aware that the timing is different than it would be if these fights were on HBO and Showtime okay let me hear from you thanks for stopping by